Yeah. It's also about being able to sweat and being uh, dressed appropriately to allow that sweat to move, uh, to evaporate off your body. Yep. And heat acclimation training is as simple as it sounds. So just practice it more. So uh, if you're going into a process where you either need to be in a hot environment or you need to improve your sweat rate, you just need to practice sweating and your body will get better to that. Uh, practice the sauna, practice the jacuzzi. Just get in those things and you will uh, improve your ability to do that. Now, there is a huge genetic component. Uh, I have one individual, actually uh, a UFC fighter I've been working with, and I don't mind mentioning his name. He'll give me full permission. Scott Holtzman. Uh, many, many years. Um, he's actually... Um, fighting right now actually today he'll be going he is like he, he is like you described like buckets and buckets and buckets of fluids come off this guy when he's tying his shoes like he just goes right like i know we've we've improved that he actually sweat too much we worked on that a lot early in his career and we, we got some improvements down to get him to hold on to the fluids better that being said uh, i've worked with other individuals in his weight category and it's the opposite right so we can have them literally do the exact same training session together and scott will dump six pounds and, and other folks at his size will dump two two and a half so there's a genetic component that is just there and you don't need to worry about it there um so can you identify if you are a heavy salt sweater or not. Well, you have a whole bunch of routes for this. Number one is you can use the old free uh, cost free test of just looking at your clothing. And if you're seeing that white residue all over it, so you've, you all have a friend who probably wears that same bas baseball hat that they've had for eight years. If it is covered in the white junk all over the place, um, that's a sign of a higher salt sweater. If the opposite happens and it's like you can pull their clothing back and, and there's just nothing there and um, they are maybe a little bit of a lower salt sweater. Um, you can also use any number of uh, hydration tests. I know that there is some coming out in the market very, very soon that can give you theoretically real time um, measurements. It's like a CGM would be, uh, although I haven't seen any data on if those are accurate or not. I haven't used one yet, uh, but there are a number that are out uh, super cheap, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks, all the way up to a couple hundred dollars. You can buy these patches, put them on you and get a reasonably close estimate. Um, and again, if those things are five or 10 or 20% off, I don't know. I have to see independent data come out first, but even if they are, you're not, you're not worried about the specific milligrams, right? Whether you sweat out, you know, 1250 milligrams in a workout or if it's 1340, it doesn't really matter. You're trying to look for big, big numbers, right? Are you losing 500 milligrams using three and a half grams like you're at. So those things will get you in a ballpark to do exactly what you just said. Am I high, medium, or low? Um, and there's a lot of them that, that I've used in the past. So that, that's another way to go about it. Um, then what you want to do is probably match your electrolyte intake to something close to what you sweat. That's the ideal scenario. Um, you can get a lot of information about hydration from blood. Um, you can look at like acute markers of dehydration, like hemoglobin, dematocrit. Uh, if you're like, if your hemoglobin is like 15 plus, it's funny. <laughs> We've talked about this in a few episodes before, but I see that and I'm like, man, that dude's super fit. That's a, like a 15 uh, for hemoglobin would be pretty high 14 or so would be pretty good for a female. That's also the exact same thing as the sign of acute dehydration. Um, so hematocrit, same thing. If you're north of 50%, you're probably dehydrated. So you can get a lot. There are also though a lot of biomarkers that can tell you more about chronic dehydration. So you can run through those things as well. So a good blood chemistry test can tell you a lot. You can actually get some insights into your sodium and potassium. Albumin is another fantastic way to, to measure longer term hydration status. Another one of these amazing globulins that we've sort of talked a lot about. So you can do all those things.